That's beautiful. After the highly successful seventh shuttle mission, featuring America's first woman in space, the first full pictures of the shuttle flying on orbit, and the launching of two commercial satellites, Challenger is ready to fly again. STS-8 will include a night launch and landing, with liftoff scheduled for August 30th. Mission 8 will again use a five-member team of astronauts, with Richard Truly of Fayette, Mississippi as commander. Truly was pilot of STS-2, a test flight of Orbiter Columbia in November 1981. As for the launch, I think it's going to be a spectacular view, but as far as procedures uh, go, they really don't change with a night launch. The landing is different, however. Ben Brennenstein and I have done a lot of uh, flight tests with a number of other people in developing a night lighting scheme, and uh, we, we will have it in place at all the landing sites, both at Kennedy, Edwards, and at Northland. Forty-year-old Dan Brandenstein will serve as pilot on STS-8. He described the photo documentation for the flight. Well, we're uh, taking quite a bit of uh, film along to take pictures, and uh, as in previous flights, uh, we take uh, a lot of pictures of both the ocean and the earth. A night launch drives us to a, uh, in the southern hemisphere, we're in daylight essentially all the time, and in the northern hemisphere, we're in the dark. So we'll be seeing parts of uh, South America and uh, Australia that haven't been seen by previous crews. And we, uh, both the oceanographers are interested in the ocean around these areas, and the uh, geologists are interested in uh, some of the land. Mission specialist David Gardner of Clinton, Iowa, will use the remote manipulator system with the payload flight test article. He explained one purpose of this simulated satellite. The shape of it is uh, supposed to simulate a payload that's coming along on STS-13 called the uh, Long Duration Exposure Facility, LDEF. Uh, that uh, payload is so large that the crew is going to be unable to see from the uh, aft flight deck the attached points where the LDEF attaches to the uh, orbiter. So one of the tasks is going to going to be to attempt to uh, unberth it out of the payload bay, berth it back into the payload bay with those visual restrictions similar to that later flight. Mission specialist Guyan Bluford of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania will be the first black American to fly in space. He's primarily responsible for the deployment of a commercial satellite called INSAT. The INSAT is a Indian satellite. It's a communication satellite that's going to be used by the Indian government to broadcast communications throughout the Indian Peninsula. It's also going to be used as a weather satellite to, uh, to map the Indian Peninsula with reference to weather and also be able to relay that information to various remote areas of India. William okay, Thornton is a mission right. specialist and medical okay. doctor who will be now continuing research in into the effect rate. of weightlessness on astronauts and the sickness okay. that sometimes so accompanies the go, body's adjustment uh, we'll just to zero started. G. Okay. What I'm doing is an in-flight investigation that would be very similar to what someone uh, would get here on Earth if you went into a specialist office and said, uh, Doctor, I'm a bit dizzy. Can you tell me why? I have simply translated these ordinary clinical investigations that are done into hardware that the measurements can be made in weightlessness so that we can characterize what's going on. Space Shuttle 8, a night launch and a night landing for Challenger, part of this country's space transportation system.